And with regards to the accreditation, this is looking at whether institutions have the capacity to run the programs of study that they want to offer to the public. And, and so we, uh, the standards include the infrastructure. Do they have the infrastructure? Do they have the proper management to offer such programs? Are the curriculum relevant to what they are offering? When it comes to relevant, Mr. Kinte and the Jibu will talk about relevance of programs to our industries because they are also looking at what the skills, skill gaps are within the Tibet sector to ensure that they develop the human resource. They feed this information to the training institutions to develop the appropriate in human resource that will go and serve the industry. So Very the much. relevance of <coughs> programs are uh, essential, the curriculum, the um, teaching aids and reference materials, all these come into play when institutions apply for registration and accreditation. And they are accredited based on these standards so that I mean, any institution who is accredited to offer, for instance, a business management program, we are sure of that the institution have the capacity in terms of human resource, in terms of material resource, in terms of the infrastructure, and all these things before they are given the license to operate. Mm. Thank you very much, Mr. Babusise, for giving us an insight as to the, the benchmarks used in the registration and accreditation of institutions. Um, this brings us to um, the labor market information. And Mr. Jibu Job, I would like to ask at this point, can you tell us what the labor market information is and it in, in relation to the National Training Authority? Um, thank you, Samuel. Uh, good evening, viewers. Uh, if you talk about uh, labor market information, uh, basically um, it looks at um, two elements. And these two elements are um, demand of skills and supply of skills. As um, the previous speakers have highlighted, um, when NTA, NTA is mandated to develop um, a qualification framework, and the qualification framework that we have developed, we, we, we've already started developing. It's called the Gambia Skills Qualification Framework. As Babu has mentioned, uh, before we had some technical assistance that came in um, to look at how, where do we start to develop, uh, where would we start to develop the GSQ? Um, that's where I come in. When you talk about labor market information system, um, it's about looking at the supply side of skills, matching it with demand side of skills. Because when you're training people in institutions and in training centers, at the end of the day, they graduate and they're ready for the job market. And the other side, which is the demand, is where the employers are. These are the people that require the skills of the people that you are training in. Now, how do you match to make sure that these two um, elements are balanced? There is no mismatch. That's where the labor market information comes in. To see that people that are trained are trained on skills that are required by the employers or by the industry. So at the end of the day, when they graduate, it will be um, easy for them to be able to acquire jobs or be self-employed. Um, before we started developing the GSQ, uh, there were some initial studies we have done to look at what are the skills needs of the country. Uh, basically, we conducted two um, surveys. Uh, we conducted a household survey, a training needs assessment, which was conducted um, countrywide, in addition to an enterprise survey, which we also did. Now, the household survey was looking at what, what, what are some of the skills that people would like to be training? What are some of the skills that are missing in, 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 in certain localities or in certain communities? Now, those two studies we conducted together with other reference materials we have used. For example, a government development agenda document, uh, Vision 2020, um, and also some data that we acquired from the Gambia um, Bureau of Statistics. When we analyzed this data, we were able to identify key areas to start with for the Gambia Skills Qualification Framework. And these studies have shown 
um, that there are areas that are of priority to the government of the Gambia. And also, there are areas that we have a large presence of foreign nationals. What I mean by foreign nationals is are non-Gambians from other countries. For example, I can give you an um, example like uh, motor mechanics. Most of the workshops we do see in town, a lot of Senegalese people that are working there. And in some other areas like electrical installation. So when we analyze all this data that we had, uh, we were able to identify key priority areas to start with. Ultimately, we intend to develop in the GSQ the sectors of the economy, all the sectors, on the economy, all occupational areas that exist in the economy of the Gambia. But through these surveys, we are able to identify and start with key or priority areas. And this included motor mechanics, um, electrical installation, um, carpentry is one of them, fishing is one of them, horticulture, and a lot of other areas, building construction, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So, in essence, we conduct, I do conduct what you call um, service, and this service would have to help us develop um, uh, the identify the skill areas that are needed um, to be able to uh, continue develop the Gambia Skills Qualification Framework. So, basically, when you talk about um, to summarize, when you talk about the labor market information system, it's looking at the demand side, which is the employers at the other end, and the supply side, which is coming from the institutions, because you need to match these two together to make sure that there is um, less imbalances between the two. You don't train people for the sake of training, but you train people at the end of the day for them to be able to get jobs. How do you ensure that? You have to provide them with the quality training that the industry would need. And this is how we came in to start with the key areas I have mentioned for the Gambia Skills Qualification Framework. Maybe further, uh, Mr. Kinte would come in to explain how do we, um, identif after identifying these skill gaps, how do we go about to make sure that we are able to develop qualifications or occupational areas which will be sent to the institution ultimately for to train people in various skill areas. Thank you very much, Mr. Jibu Job. Um, this brings us to a very, very important point. Mr. Job talked about the demand and supply of, skill, of skills. Yes, yes. Um, Mr. Mane, can you tell us how you implement standards in these institutions? Because okay. it is from these institutions that these you know, skilled people will go out to the larger market. Samuel, as Mr. Job made mention of, his uh, 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 main role is to identify skill gaps. These skill gaps is what we use, like some of the gray areas that he made mention of that are in demands in our s s s uh, s skill market. We identify the skill gaps, like the areas that he made mention of. And then what I do in my office is to look at all what is happening in other authorities. Um, I'm proud to report that we benchmark with what is happening in Botswana, we benchmark with what is happening in Namibia, we benchmark with wha what is happening in that's those scale er 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 areas in New Zealand, Australia, uh, Lantra in UK, with all the any other authorities. We look at the internet and then find out what are the areas in that sca in, in, in that skill areas are. So what we do is we sort of bring uh, 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 compile them to a sort of a booklet like if it is carpentry we scout what is happening in other countries and then we also don't underrate what is happening in our institutions we also make sure we get information from our institutions and then provide the panel members with those information one important area babu mentioned of we quality as well you see we don't sit down at nta and then draw up these standards and give it to institutions. So our quality assurance mechanism requires the formation of panel members in the A sector. If it is electrical installation, we select the institutions or the employers in the electrical uh, installation industry in the Gambia. If it is horticulture, we look at the, industry, the, 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 the farms that are operating horticulture because the farms are very, very important. Our standards are employer driven. Because if you look at our definition of our standards, we simply said they are 